How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up a dedicated server for Don't Starve Together using DigitalOcean as a service provider. So as you can see right here, I've been using DigitalOcean to host my dedicated server for Don't Starve Together for the past six months. I created this instance on February 13th of 2018 and it served me quite well so far. If we look at the actual stats of the virtual private server. I'm using two virtual CPUs, two gigabytes of RAM, and a 60 gigabyte disk. And this costs me $15 per month. And this is the main reason why I'm choosing DigitalOcean over some of its competitors. It's the best deal around at the moment that I've found. Now, setting up these uh, dedicated servers can be a little bit complicated, especially for anybody who isn't comfortable using a command line. I'm going to be stepping you through how I do it. So to get started with, uh, in this guide, I'm going to be making a couple of assumptions here. Number one, you're going to need to have an account with DigitalOcean. And number two, you're going to be using Windows and you can download and install an application called Putty. So this is what Putty looks like. And this is what we're going to use to control the dedicated server that we set up. So just keep that in mind. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is go back over to DigitalOcean and we need to create our own droplet. That's what these little virtual instances are called. So uh, go to create, uh, click droplets, and we're going to create a small one this time. Now you can see there are quite a few different options here. The one that I use for my main server is going to be the two gigabyte one right here. But for this example, I'm just going to be using the cheapest one so that way I don't have to pay quite as much for it while I'm providing this demonstration. You can choose a different plan. I would recommend the $15 a month plan uh, with two gigab gigabytes of RAM and two virtual CPUs, but it is ultimately up to you. If you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, try something cheaper and see if that works for you because it very well might. If you only have a couple of people on, you might be able to do this for $5 a month. Okay, so we're going to scroll down a little bit more. We don't need to add backups. We don't need to add block storage. We will need to choose a data center and this is going to depend where you live. You can see there are quite a few options here depending upon your geographic location. Obviously, you're going to be at an advantage if you live in North America and I'm just going to stick with the default of New York. There are additional options here that you can safely ignore. One of the things that people can get a little bit intimidated by is adding SSH keys. You can safely ignore this and use a password instead. We'll want to get started with just one droplet. You could create more, but we don't need to. And then we need to give it a host name. The default is fine, but in this case, we're going to use um, a custom name. So DST test one is going to be how we keep track of it. And then I have a special project here created called DST Deddy servers, which is where we're going to be. It's like a folder to put all of your droplets, which are these virtual servers. It's like a folder you can put all of them in. So we're going to click create and now it's going to work on setting that up. So we're using the Ubuntu operating system here. And another thing that I probably should mention here is that this guide was created for the way the game currently exists in 2018. It's certainly possible things will change in the future that might break compatibility or might require certain aspects of what I'm doing here to be tweaked. To make it work. Okay, so uh, you can see our first droplet is set up now. It's currently running, it's active, it's turned on and everything, and we've just click on the title and it's going to load up some data about it. Now we're going to get an email. It's going to give us our initial root password. So I'm going to have to go over to the email. Yes, so at 5.33 a.m., which is when I'm recording this, you can see username and password. So we want to copy that password there. But first, let's go back over here and let's copy the IP address. So by default, these droplets are set up with an IPv4 address, and this is how we're going to connect to that server. We don't use a domain name. You could use one, but we're not going to use one. So now we get uh, out PuTTY. When you open up PuTTY, it's going to present this interface here. You make sure you have session selected. You should see a dialog box that says host name or IP address. We're going to use IP address in this case. Just put in that IP address and then click open. And you get this uh, putty security alert the very first time you attempt to connect to this IP address. Just click yes. And now you'll be given this uh, terminal. So now as you can see, it's asking for a login. We have successfully connected to the IP address. And we need to go back over to the email, copy that password in the email that DigitalOcean automatically sends you. So um, we're going to be logging in as user root. And then we can right click on this to paste the password. Now this is one rather strange thing about the PuTTY application and Ubuntu in general, is that they will never display any characters for the passwords you type. So I did just paste that password that I copied from the email 
even though it doesn't look like it. And I pasted it by right clicking in putty. This is very important. You can't use control V and you can't use a context menu to paste in putty by default. You're always going to be using the right mouse button. So right click once and you'll paste it. And we'll see this later on. Uh, let's go ahead and um, log in though. As you can see, we're successfully in, but now they're asking us to change the password. So we will be forced to change that password right away. I'm just gonna paste that password that we copied from the email again, because it's asking for it here. It's the current password. Then we need to find a new password to enter in. I'm just going to create a new insecure one and use that and then retype it again. Use something that's sick. Oh, <laughs> the new password is too simple. Okay, we're not going to do that then. Uh, I just copy something else over here. Yeah, so there are security things in place to prevent you from doing anything stupid, I guess. Probably for the best. As you can see, I got lazy there and that's how you end up making mistakes you'll regret later. Okay, so now we're successfully in. And this is where we actually get started in actually setting up the Don't Starve Together server. So I did create a little bit of a, a guide here, but the thing is that most of this comes from this page here. So when I'm setting up this server, I'm going to be largely referring back to a forum post on the Clay forums that has been up here for a couple of years at this point. And it's called the Dedicated Server Quick Setup Guide for Linux. Remember, we're using Ubuntu here. We're using a Linux operating system. We're not installing this on Windows. This guide will not apply for trying to install Steam CMD on your Windows computer, right? It applies specifically to Linux operating systems. Even though I'm imagining you're going to be connecting to it from a Windows operating system like I'm doing here and connecting using PuTTY. So there will be a link to this forum post that I'm following here. And by and large, it gives you everything you need. But there are some things to keep in mind. Number one, you can't use the root user to set up a Don't Starve Together dedicated server. You're going to need to create a separate normal user account because the root user does not have the correct home folders and whatnot. It, it just completely does not work. Another thing that we need to do is add an architecture. So I'm just going to go through the commands one at a time and uh, you'll see what I enter in and then you can follow along. So the first thing that I need to do here and I'm going to copy it off of my other document that I have set up for this is I need to add the I386 architecture. If I don't add this, what is recommended here in the forum post will not be possible for me to do with the operating system that DigitalOcean provided me with here. So as you can see, I right clicked that, it adds it in there at the very bottom of the terminal. Press enter. Okay, it's added it. We don't get much feedback. Now this is also very important. We're going to upgrade. We're going to update and upgrade the apt-get and the distribution. I don't know a lot about the technicalities of this, but it is important to make sure that everything is kind of on the same page. And you'll notice there is stuff being added here. Like I said before, I'm not a professional at this. I just kind of know it works and I have a vague idea of why it works many times, but I couldn't tell you the specifics behind it. So if you see a prompt that comes up like right here where it asks you if it can use this additional space to install these things, just go ahead and press Y and then press enter and it'll continue installing. Now we just wait for this upgrade, this update and upgrade to finish. You'll probably see a package configuration screen like this. It has a pink background behind it. Just press enter and you'll be fine. You don't need to select anything special in there. Just press enter. Okay, the upgrade has finished. Now we're going to start copying information from the forum post. So the first thing that we're going to be copying in here, since we're using a 64-bit version of this operating system, is this line right up here, sudo apt-get install, and then it has various libraries and stuff. So we're going to paste that down there, right-click again, the paste after we copy it. I'm copying it off of my own notepad. You can see here on the left side. It's the same though as what's on the form. It's, it's just easier for me to copy from a notepad. However you do it, it should work. Uh, press enter and we're going to install this. It prompts you whether or not you want to install. It's going to take 30 megabytes, but remember we're running this in a cloud. So it's not actually going to need to download that. Press Y, press enter, and it will continue installing. Wait until this has finished installing and then we'll move on to the next part. We're getting close to the end here, believe it or not. Okay, that's finished installing. Now we're going to add a new user. This is not included in the forum post, so I will be linking a version of this post here, probably on Pastebin, that you can follow along with what I'm doing here. So I'm adding user, the user is called DST. So add user DST. It asks for a new password. This does not have to be a very secure password, strangely enough. Uh, we need to type it in twice though to verify. And then like we were asked for a name, 
Uh, if you don't want to fill in any of these fields, you can just keep pressing enter until you get to the bottom, press Y. Uh, the information is correct. And now we have a new user added, and this is the user that we're going to be using to run the DST dedicated server as opposed to the root. Right now I'm in the root user. You can see it says root at DST test one. We're going to be switching over to DST user pretty soon. But first we're going to be modding the privileges of this user. So here's another command, user mod. I just found this command looking around online. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it kind of fixes the problems that I had when it came to assigning the new user to a group. There's probably a better way to do this, but so far it seems to work. Okay, now we're gonna switch over to the new user that I created, the DST user. So we do SU and then DST. And you'll notice now it says DST at DST test one. It used to be root at DST test one, now we're DST at DST test one. So that means that we've successfully switched users here. Uh, next, we're going to start working again on the forum post that I'm referencing here. So this part requires us to make a directory for Steam CMD. Now, there is the possibility to install CM, uh, Steam CMD directly from repositories that are being provided by either the Ubuntu developers themselves or a mirror like what DigitalOcean provides. We're not going to use those because it does not usually allow you to specify where you want to install it and we need to install it to a specific directory for Don't Starve Together to find it. So that's why we're going to be following what they do in the forum post here. So the first thing we need to do, just copy, like you'll notice a lot of this for Linux based kinds of programs. A lot of it has to do with just copying and pasting various commands into a terminal. Uh, it, it's not very intimidating. It's just maybe a little bit tedious. So we're going to make a directory there, make directory uh, steam CMD. Then we're going to change to that directory. We're going to have, uh, we're going to navigate to it like that. Then we're going to go ahead here, use uh, wget to download the zip file. It's not a zip file, it's a compressed file for a Steam CMD. So as you can see right there, downloaded. Now we're going to unzip it to the folder that we're going to use it in. And it is just as simple as pasting these commands. There is really nothing else you need to do here. It's all been done just like that. Now we're going to making more directories. So this is making the directory for the, the master folder. That's where the overworld is stored. Here, copy this one. This is where the caves is stored. You just paste that in there and press enter it every time. Now you're going to need to go ahead and generate and then copy a server token for Don't Starve Together. I'm going to cut in a bit of footage here that shows me going ahead and finding that key and copying it. I'm not too concerned about showing mine here because all it does is it makes you an, the default administrator on that server. So if you steal my tokens and use them instead, it means that you will not be able to control your server as an administrator, but I will, which really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Yeah, so once you have it set up, you'll see here in the forum post, create your own clustered token. It mentions everything you need to know here. Uh, just refer to that if you need more specific details. Once you have created that clustered token though, go ahead, copy it. And then once again, paste it in here. And it's just gonna automatically make that file for you. Now we have a whole bunch of files that are using some sort of, I'm not exactly sure, is this binary? I don't know how this works, but this creates a bunch of files, just these blocks of text, and they're all included here in the forum post. You just copy this thing at the very bottom. I, For convenience, I, I just pasted them over here on this uh, document, this notepad document that I'm referring to. But, you know, just, just enter it in there. They're not that many. Just copy them, paste them, and you're good to go, really. There's really nothing special that needs to be done at this point. All of it's just copying and pasting and then pressing enter, obviously. Okay, so now we should have everything set up. We will want to check to make sure the folders are all here. So I'm just going to navigate back to the home folder. So you can do that by typing in CD and then a little squiggly line. And we're going to list what's in that folder by hitting LS. And you'll notice there are two files in here. So this looks pretty good. One of them is uh, the run dedicated servers.sh file, which is what we're going to be using to actually get the server started. And the second one is a folder that's called Steam CMD. So it looks like everything that we need is there. We're probably going to run into an error here. This is something I've had for a while. Yes, it says permission denied. Now, this is a shortcoming on my part. It is something that I haven't quite learned how to fix yet. 
I do have a workaround though. Um, yeah, apparently I don't have the right permissions for this user. It's because I don't know Linux too well. I'm still learning it. But what we can do instead is I found this command that will change the permissions on this one specific file so that way I can run it. So we're just going to enter that in. And now I'm going to try running the dedicated server again. And this time it should work. So there you can see it's actually going ahead and downloading the Don't Starve Together dedicated server at this point. And there really isn't much more to do at this point besides wait for it to finish launching. And then once it's up, I'm going to be going ahead and launching Don't Starve Together to show you that I can actually connect to this server. Okay. Now, if you look at the very bottom of this terminal that I opened, it says shard. Uh, both of them are ready and it says sim paused. So this is where it stops. And now I can go ahead and launch Don't Starve Together. So I'm going to try to keep this window in front of us most of the time. What we want to look for here is super server, because that is what your server will be called by default. So right here it is. This is the one I just set up. OK, I'm going to try connecting to it. Now we can go over here and look at this terminal again. This is the one that we set everything up on. And you will notice that it mentions that I joined it. It says user uh, joined announcement raising hell. So we know we connected to the right super server. This wasn't just some other default super server that uh, some other people decided to set up. So let's just go ahead and jump in here. I'm going to show you that it works. So this is working on one virtual CPU and I think one gigabyte of RAM, $5 plan. And you can see everything works pretty much as expected. I have like a 69 ping, but that's because I have a wireless connection. So you probably have better and uh, it works, you know, what can you say? That's all you need to know to get the server up and going to begin with. I'll be making another video on setting up Don't Starve Together dedicated servers with DigitalOcean. That second video is going to be focusing on configuring the server to suit your needs. So in other words, giving it a custom name, installing mods on it. All these things take additional time, but it is most certainly doable. But this was sort of a crash course into how you can go ahead and set it up on a dedicated server using DigitalOcean. And it's assumed that you're going to be connecting to it from uh, a Windows machine. Now that we've left the game, we probably want to shut this all down. And you can do that by uh, hitting Control C on your keyboard with the focus being on the putty console right here. And you'll notice it says it's shut down and everything. Make sure you save the world if it hasn't saved recently before shutting it down because it will not save before shutting it down when you press Control C on your keyboard. So I hope that made sense or at least was easy enough to follow along with. I'll be including relevant links in the description below this video to the putty application, to DigitalOcean, and to the forum post that I used for the majority of this video. I'll also probably be including a paste bin link in which I'll store the entire contents of this one file, which I kind of compiled together that adds the additional ingredients, I guess you could say, the additional commands needed to actually make the forum post work correctly with DigitalOcean. But yeah, everything should be down there. And if you still can't figure out how to get it installed, uh, just contact me and I'm sure we can work out a price that's agreeable. I'm hoping that this video right here was sufficient uh, in stepping you through the process that can get you up and going. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.